Hey, what's up guys? Chris McCarthy here with McFit Method and this is your workout of the day. Now before we get started in this workout, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I try to post new videos every single day and I don't want you to miss any of this content and these workouts and these movements. So and also down in the description down below, I've also linked up some of my challenges. I've got challenges for weight loss and then also muscle building. So feel free to click on those links down below and join one of my challenges. All right guys, let's get started in today's workout of the day and it's gonna be four rounds today and it's gonna start off with this jump rope and we're gonna do 100 rotations of this jump rope. Also in this workout today, it's just gonna be all kettlebell. So you're gonna need a kettlebell as well, a couple maybe different weights depending on the different movements that we're we're doing, but it's gonna be jump rope and kettlebell today. So it starts off with 100 rotations of this jump rope. Now we're always maintaining proper form on this jump rope and really what that means is you're keeping your feet together on the balls of your feet. So you're jumping on the balls of your feet and it's basically a bounding motion. So you're just kind of jumping up and down just enough to clear that rope underneath your feet. We don't have to jump really high here. Also, there's no need to bring your knees up super high or kick your legs back. Trust me, you only have to jump just enough high enough to get this little rope underneath. So it's a bounding motion, keeping that chest up the entire time, looking straight out into the horizon. And then also when you're rotating that jump rope, we wanna make sure we are rotating it with our wrists. So it's kind of a, a whipping motion as it goes around. We don't want a lot of movement at the elbow joint or at the shoulder joint, because that extends the rope out and you'll trip up over your toes with that. So keep it in close, tight, elbows in, hands should be slightly in front of your hips. So we're gonna do 100 rotations of this jump rope. Now if you're just doing single jumps, you just do 100 rotations of this. Now, if you want to intensify this workout, you can do what's called double unders, and that is two rotations of the jump rope for every jump. So that will definitely intensify this workout quite a bit if you decide to do 100 of those instead of just the single unders. And then if you want to kind of mid-level intermediate and you want to intensify it, but you're unable to do double unders, you can do run in place, which is just alternating your feet right, right, right left, right left. Either way, what you're gonna do is 100 rotations of this jump rope to start off this workout. And then we're gonna move into the first kettlebell exercise, which is gonna be 20 alternating single arm kettlebell swings. So I'm gonna set my jump rope down back here, stage the jump rope behind me. I always stage it around me like this, so basically what happens is it's a nice arc, so you can go into the strength component, whether you're using dumbbells, kettlebells, whatever you're using. Once you've completed that, it's very easy just to step back into the staging room, grab this jump rope, pull it up behind you, and initiate the first swing of that jump rope. So stage it behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my kettlebell here and we're doing these single arm kettlebell swings today. And I picked a little bit of a lighter one since it is a single arm movement. Now that gets a little tricky in the transition. Uh, a lot of people are like, when, if I'm doing single and I'm alternating from right to left to right to left, where is the best time to actually transition? So it may seem a little awkward, but the best place to transition is actually up at the peak, uh, right in front of your face up here. That's where you're gonna switch. If you try to switch down here, that kettlebell's got the gravity pulling down. It's got too much momentum going back. And if you try to switch here, you're gonna lose the actual momentum of the swing. So the best place to uh, switch your hands is right up here in front. As the momentum's coming up, at some point, it's basically gonna, uh, go against gravity and it's gonna become completely weightless. And it's just at that moment when that kettlebell is about to come back down, that's where it's easy just to switch your hands at that point. Then you can easily swing it back between your legs, come all the way back up. So I've got the kettlebell on the ground here. I'm in a nice squat stance. My feet are a little bit wider than hip width apart. Toes are pointed out slightly. So I'm keeping my chest up, I'm gonna grab this kettlebell and I'm just gonna send my hips back straighten out those legs a little bit, kind of hinge at the hips, send that kettlebell back between my legs, and then I'm gonna use the power of my lower body to then swing that kettlebell and pop it up in front of me. Now you notice, my arm is gonna stay straight the entire time. I'm not pulling on a kettlebell at all. The only thing your arm is doing is continuing to connect that kettlebell from your hand to your body, from all, straight arm all the way to your shoulder. So this is just kind of like a pendulum as it's swinging. You're, it, the kettlebell swing movement is a lower body strength conditioning movement. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this kettlebell. I'm gonna send it back between my legs. I'm gonna initiate the first swing here. And then I'm gonna switch hands at the top, like I said, swing, switch hands at the top, swing, switch hands at the top. There's a point where that kettlebell gets up in front of you and it feels almost weightless, and that's when you switch. Make sure you are popping up those hips, opening up those hips full extension at the top, and you're gonna end up doing a total of 20 of those alternating kettlebell swings, so 10 on each arm. Once you've completed that, then we're gonna go back to that jump rope. We're gonna do another 100 rotations of that jump rope, and then we're moving into the next kettlebell movement, which is more of a conditioning movement, and it's just 10 lateral burpees over the kettlebell. 
So we're really gonna go right from the jump rope, which is conditioning, right into another conditioning fat burning movement. And we're utilizing the kettlebell, but really just as something to kind of jump over laterally. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this kettlebell down here, make sure it's in a good position. Uh, make sure your rope is out of the way since we're gonna be kind of jumping from side to side here. And I'm gonna stand on one side and we're gonna do lateral burpees over this kettlebell. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start on one side, I'm going to uh, do the burpee and then I'm gonna jump over to the other side. Typical burpee position here, what we wanna do is we wanna squat down. Once we get into that down position, we're gonna put our hands on the ground, we're gonna kick our legs back into a plank position. From that plank position, we are then gonna go into a push-up position, push down, chest touches the ground, press out of that, bring our feet back in, stand fully upright, jump a little bit off the ground, touch your hands overhead. So it looks like this from this upright position, squat down, kick the legs back, press a push-up, push up out of that, bring your feet back in, and now normally you would jump up and touch your hands over. When we jump now, we're gonna jump laterally over that kettlebell. So we're gonna jump over. Now, we're gonna go back into this, kick the legs back, push up position, press out, come up, jump off to the next side, back down, burpees. So we're doing lateral burpees over this kettlebell. And you're gonna end up doing 10 of those lateral burpees over that kettlebell today. Then once you've completed that, you're gonna pick up that jump rope again, another 100 rotations of that jump rope. And then we're gonna go into the final movement today with that kettlebell, which is 20 kettlebell Russian twists. So we're gonna be working the abs, we're gonna be working the core right now. Uh, may wanna lighten the load up a little bit on the kettlebell. We're doing 20 of these Russian twists, so I'm just gonna grab a little light kettlebell here. We're gonna sit down on the ground, from this position, I'll turn a little bit here so you can kind of see. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, you can keep your feet or your heels on the ground. We want to have a slight bend in your knees here, and you're going to lean back about 45 degrees. You're going to grab this kettlebell. It's touching on one side, and you're going to rotate, touch it on the other side, all the way back. Now, the key to these is to make sure you are sitting back or leaning back about 45 degrees. If you're fully upright, it turns into more of a shoulder back exercise and bicep exercise. But by leaning back, now you're engaging that core, engaging those abs. And that's really what's going to strengthen that core. Now, if you want to intensify it even more, you can then raise your heels off the ground, keeping those feet together, and then rotate either way. So we're gonna do a set of 20 of these alternating uh, seated Russian kettlebell twists to really work that core. Then once you've completed that, you're gonna go ahead and rest for one minute. And then that's gonna complete one round of this workout. Then after that, you're gonna go back up to the top and you're gonna repeat all those exercises again for a total of four rounds. So, all right guys, hope you enjoyed this workout today. Comment down below how you enjoyed this workout and also make sure you do subscribe to this channel and click on the links to join some of my challenges in the description. And I will see you right back here tomorrow in the McFit Method Gym.